I'm here with Karen, aka <laughs> who made that. <laughs> and um, Karen emailed me after I did this Instagram video about changing body shapes, and so I've come here well, to have a chat. Yeah, fantastic. Um, welcome to <laughs> you make that towers. <laughs> so, I guess, how have you found your body has changed? You know. Through the, through the decades? Yeah, um, really interesting. So, um, my 20s, obviously, you're just 20 and going yeah. out and having fun yeah. and abusing your body and not even really thinking about your body no. very much. <laughs> 30s felt like I was kind of, I kept expecting to see the <laughs> aging process start to kick in. Yeah. And it kind of didn't. The th my 30s were like this really great age of, hmm, aging doesn't seem to be happening. Yeah. My 40s, uh, definitely, that was the decade. Um, like I really remember a friend who was turning forty, and she and she was saying, "Now, what's it like in your forties?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's when it all starts to kick in." Okay. <laughs> um, so forties for me has definitely been the decade where I've seen change. Yeah, um, and so I'm just about to turn forty-eight. For anybody who doesn't know where I'm at, um, yeah. So and sensing that. Um, I think I'm probably, I think it's called perimenopausal, where the menopause is what? kind of on the... I don't even know. What okay, I think it basically, so. I think, well, no, the, the, well, this is the thing, I don't even really fully know what it means. I think it, I think that means that the menopause is on the horizon. Okay. And you're starting to see some changes, but you've not fully kicked into the menopause. But this is one of my passions, is I think that the menopause is one of those parts of being a woman that is still not fully discussed in the way It's that not at all and, and actually I started this from listening to the women's hour um, week on menopause oh, and okay. I knew nothing of, I, I obviously knew it was happening, I knew it happened, I remember my mum having hot flushes yeah. but I didn't know when it started, I didn't know that it can change your body shape, give you depression, like all these things, some, some women gave up their jobs, it, because they just couldn't, you know, it affected them so dramatically. Yeah. And I think it's something that no one talks about, and I thought it was an interesting angle to have it in a sewing capacity, because we're really lucky, because we can, we make our clothes, so we can make them fit, and it, yeah, it's, it's a hard sort of, I think it's really mean, basically, that it yeah. happens. Yeah, and um, I, I mean, I have no idea what the menopause involved, other than apparently you get hot flushes. And yeah. That's about it. Um, you know, it was only a few years ago that I asked my mum when her menopause kicked in and actually hers happened relatively early in life and um, it was just one of those odd things that was like, why have we never discussed this? Because if it's happened early for you, that means there's a chance it could happen early for mm. me. And actually as a woman, that's, that's quite an important detail of, of your health to be aware yeah. of, you know, particularly if you're somebody who was maybe hoping to have children who, yeah. you know, clock ticking and all that, so... Um. It's exactly the same as me, I'd never asked my mum about it, and I rang her after listening to the Women's Hour thing, and she said, oh, I got my menopause when I was 45. Yeah. And, and I, again, was like, why didn't you tell me that? <laughs> That's ten years away, it's not that yeah, long. Yeah, That's exactly how I felt. It's yeah. like, oh, you, you didn't think that might be quite useful information. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not... But that's clearly a cultural thing that women just don't really talk, talk about, about it. Her. Yeah. In the way that we do talk really openly now about, you know, periods and, you know, gender issues. Yeah. So mm. in terms of your makes, like, obviously you're fairly prolific. You make stuff. I'd say most weeks it feels like. <laughs> um, what? So in terms of patterns and shapes, what? What are your kind of yeses and nos? Yeah, um, I, it happened quite gradually, but I noticed that I was starting to train myself to just not consider certain patterns. You know, when you get really caught up in the thrill of a pattern release and everybody's yeah, yeah. very excited on that. social media, <laughs> and, and you, you know, you, your hand is pressing pressing the PayPal button before you've even thought properly about what it is that you're buying. And I definitely started to train myself out of that. So for example, now, anything that has a very defined waistband um, and lots of gathers at the waist, I just don't want anymore because um, one of the ways that my body has changed is that um, your body does just start to cling on to weight more, but it does go into quite specific areas, i.e. your girth. 
Yeah. And so I just, it feels really constricting and uncomfortable um, to have a very defined waistband. Yeah. Um, but also it's not just about the comfort of sitting and moving about, it's, it's that it feels almost sensitive in that part of your area and you just don't, you just don't want something touching you in that part of your body. Mm. Um, and I suddenly understood, um, you, you know, women that you see wearing very loose flowing linen yeah. and this is another po point natural fabrics because yes yeah i don't i don't think i've had hot flushes in the cliche of a hot flush but um i'm quite careful now about when i'm wearing um polyesters and what have yeah. you yeah that that was the main feedback we got from everyone because we got like a flood of messages from people and it was nothing to find on the waist natural fibres, um, arms covered. Yeah, that if, honestly, if I could give a tip to any pattern designer out there, it is have more patterns with sleeve options. Yeah. Because I understand that the sleeveless dresses are much easier to fit and, and they're therefore more appealing, but for a certain demographic, again, there are a lot of patterns out there now that I just won't consider because I'm never gonna wear that sleeveless dress unless it's led with a cardigan. I agree, and also, especially British pattern designers who do that, I'm like, have I missed out on something? Because <laughs> the great British summer, it's always cold. Like, yeah. I'm, this, I'm the same about, I've the same about sleeves, I always want my arms, yeah. top, up, upper arms covered. But yeah. I think I'm ahead of the game in that. I think people my age yeah. are less bothered. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that would definitely be one of my kind of tips to pattern design is just just think about sleeve options. And what if, if you because pattern wise, what are your kind of do you have one go to patterns? So I mean, my the ultimate shift dress by so over it. I yeah. love because um, and this is the thing as well. It does have a bust start, so that you can have quite a loose fitting item, but that's, it still feels so there's some shape. Yeah. And if, you've made a lot of them. I've made them. <laughs> yeah, I think I've got about seven of them okay. now. Um, and so you look smart, but it's really comfortable to wear. It's very easy to wear. It has mm. long sleeves or short sleeves. And it's really simple, but it just really works yeah. for, for, for what I need. Um, mm. And then I've got this is the Tsuta Yuki dress, which I like. It's a more cocoon shape. Um, and I find this very easy to to wear. Um, okay, I will pop links to it, all the patterns we talk about <laughs> at the bottom. Um, what have you, I'm trying to think of other things that are kind of important to you now when you're looking for patterns. Do you have, do you have particular pattern companies that you kind of go to or is it literally whatever? Um, it's, I mean I still <clears throat> I'd still look at everything, but I guess my go-to pattern companies are so over it. I just think Lisa Comfort really understands the female body yeah. and designs in a very flattering way. Um, I really like the aesthetic of the Makers Atelier, yeah. um, although I think I need to be a little bit more... I think I need to think quite carefully about which of her patterns I choose yeah, to suit you. To suit me. Um, if you go to any of the knitting and stitching shows or any of the, she always brings a rail, a sample rail of her patterns, which I think is really clever yeah. so that you can actually go and try them on. Well, that, I mean, that, that was my breakthrough moment with that pattern company actually, because I saw her stall at the Great British Sewing Beat Live, mm. and the makes were just superb and really, mm. really fired up my imagination and did make me think, mm. actually, that's an aesthetic that could really work for me. Um, I like Stylark because they're quite prolific yeah and I think they do quite a few of those looser shows. yeah they do and I think they they think about outfit rather than patterns mm. there's a lot of things of their their sort of things that you can see you could layer the kind of cardigan with the top and the trousers yeah. I think they think about it in a more I think they design in a more of a fashion way where you're yeah. thinking about outfits rather yeah. than just pieces yeah yeah, and interestingly, I think that some of the vintage patterns I've definitely had to become more circumspect because I think, as for me, as I get older, I think some looks work really well and some just mm. don't anymore. I'm afraid. So yeah, and what and what about um, fabrics? 
because I feel like that that's where you can make things kind of look more grown up and chic and yeah um <laughs> just desperate to be a <laughs> um yes so I think I've definitely tried to train myself to kind of work with solids a bit more than I would have done earlier yeah. in my sewing career um it's really hard when you start the florals, mm. the floral cottons are just everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> and so tempting. And, and so bright, all the bright prints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I remember <laughs> some of my early makes and um, shocking. Um, so yeah, kind of like graphic prints, Yeah. Um, I think help give some of these looser shapes a bit of um, edge that makes them feel contemporary mm. rather than just shapeless. Yeah, and I think when you're looking, it's quite hard, I find it quite hard to buy planes because they feel slightly less exciting in the shop, mm -hmm. but actually it's sort of looking at your wardrobe and seeing what you wear the most in your wardrobe. I bet a lot of people who would look at their wardrobe mixed in with their ready-to-wear stuff, mm -hmm. the plain things are probably the things they pull out the most, mm -hmm. and actually thinking mm -hmm. to top up your wardrobe mm -hmm. with, with sort of... Planes. Yeah, and at, and you know, um, I think with planes, you can look at colour palettes. So sometimes I will, I will go into high street shops just to see what that season's colour palette. Yeah, is. I do that as well. And then that can inform your shopping mm. around solids, where you're building a, a coherent wardrobe. Mm. I think also the longer you've been dressmaking, I now I used to make clothes thinking I want people to know that I've made this, and now. I make things and I don't want anyone to know that I've made it. Yeah. I want it to look yeah. like I bought it in the shop. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's I, I think that happens after a few years of Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is once I mean a lot of people that I meet now kind of know that I sew and have a sewing blog and so yeah. that becomes their default conversation opener. <laughs> to ask me if I made it. Did you make it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Lucky you called your blog that. <laughs> How much of your wardrobe do you think is ready to wear and how much is homemade? Um, I'd say probably hmm, maybe 70% homemade and 30% ready to wear and I'm not one of those people who will ever say that's it I'm never shopping for clothes again because I do still love shopping for clothes. And I do as well. I think sometimes there are certain items that's like I'm never going to be able to make something to the standard that I need it to be for whatever it is, mm. or if there's some kind of detail in it that would yeah. be so painful for me to sew that I'm like, no, I'm happy to pay money for something Sometimes else. Sometimes it's just, that. I mean, the, re the joy of the retail experience. Exactly. Still can't be. Because I, it, and to be honest, I don't, I think even if you do say to yourself, right, that's it, I'm not shopping for clothes anymore, I think you just shift that. Yeah. need to buy yourself stuff into other things like fabric or shoes yeah. or accessories. Yeah, exactly. You just <laughs> filter the money somewhere else. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because actually sewing for yourself is a bit cheaper than than but not a huge no, amount really. It's, it's not for me it's not an economy no. issue as no. as it might have been, you know, yeah. decades ago. But you do buy a lot from the man outside in Sainsbury's so Yes who is very reasonably priced. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I think that's kind of everything. If we kind of covered everything. So we are now going to discuss patterns and I will do a blog post with patterns that we think, or that you like, and we think like a little capsule collection. And yeah, I'll pop a link down to that so you can go and have a look at it. Cool. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Not at all. Bye.